Good day, my dear friends. Welcome back at my channel, Grace Revisited. Today I would like to talk to you about grace from the standpoint of receiving grace and giving grace, living grace. I am Leon Forsman, Reverend at the Dutch Reformed Church in Hayfield, Peter Maritzburg, South Africa. It is a great privilege to be with you on this journey, revisiting grace. I would like to read to you from the message translation of the Bible, and then from 1 Timothy um, where Paul speaks to the young pastor Timothy and he says I am so grateful to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do this work he went out on a limb you know entrusting me with this ministry the only credentials I brought to it were invective and witch hunts and arrogance. But I was treated mercifully because I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know who I was doing it against. Grace, mixed with faith and love, poured over me and into me. And all because of Jesus. Here's a word you can take to heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. I am proof public sinner number one of someone who could never have made it apart from sheer mercy and now he shows me off evidence of his endless patience to those who are right on the edge us on trusting him forever. When we read it in any other English translation, you can go and read verses 12 through to 14, 15 of 1 Timothy. In verse 13, Paul helps us to understand what grace really is. Here he says, even though, in spite of my past, a past, a past in which I, Paul, spoke evil of God, insulted God in many ways, even went as far as persecuting God. At least, my dear friends, Paul was complicit in the death of Stephen. He may not have thrown one stone, but he was there. He was an onlooker. He was a participant in the sense that he encouraged it. And thereafter, persecuted many Christians all over the world. And in a certain sense we will look at that Paul and say to ourselves, what a horrible person is he not? But in spite of all of this, God poured out his 
abundant grace on Paul gave him faith and love. Paul says, He is proof thereof that God through nothing Paul did totally undeservedly God has accepted Paul completely. It thus can be believed and accepted as true. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. In Paul's eyes, he is the worst of all sinners in this world. And we can therefore look at Paul as an example of God's enduring love and patience and grace. Because if God could and wanted to save Paul, to love Paul, to be patient with Paul, the worst of sinners, why wouldn't he? He want to give you and me His grace as well. Why wouldn't He want to bestow His ever enduring love on us as well? Why would He be impatient with us? This is the point about grace, my dear friends. That is so, so awesome. There is in this world no one too ugly, <laughs> too bad, too evil, too full of sin or too full of him, him or herself that God's grace can and will not be granted to him or her. God's grace is extended to everyone, all people, all over the world. No matter who they are, to which ethnic group or color or sex they belong, or even how poor or rich they may be. God's grace is intended for all people. You, you and I, we just need to accept it in faith. And by the way, even the faith that works grace into our lives is a gift by God through the Holy Spirit. Even, even the faith by which we grasp and, and cling to God's grace is a gift from God. Paul helps us as well to understand that we need to recognize who we are and that without God's grace, we are lost. Lost like an animal in the desert, wandering around without aim or purpose. Paul recognizes he is a sinner, the worst of them all, an enemy of God. Grace, however, implies that you know you need God, that you cannot do it on your own, that you cannot live in this world as if there is no God. 
that you are the worst of sinners of them all. Christianity gets often blamed as regarding man in a very low light. Christianity is blamed that we devaluate man and as a, re as a result is responsible for the fact that people have a negative view of themselves that they experience themselves as worthless. But my dear friends, from a Christian perspective, this is a realistic view of ourselves. It's not about how bad we are. We just have to recognize that in and from ourselves, we are not able to save ourselves. It's not so much about how bad we are, how big a sin as we are, as it is about how God values us. Oh boy, my dear friends, and God values us very highly. He values us so much that God loved us so much he gave himself up to die for us on a cross. He, he went and he stood in the gap between a life worthless of living and a life of purpose and meaning. In Christ God sees us not as sinners, not as worthless worms, but as holy new creatures. He restores our us to the image by which he created us, namely the image of God. Our response to this amazing love of God for us can be nothing else but gratitude, my dear friends. Receiving grace is also giving grace living grace. Being graceful with yourself, first of all, acknowledging God's love of you and for you, and His immense, and the immense worth you have in His eyes is absolutely liberating. But it also means being graceful towards others, recognizing God loves them the same as He loves you. That no matter the brokenness in, the, in, in anyone's lives, no matter the choices we make or others make, no, no matter the lifestyles others choose to live, God loves them as much as He loves you and me. His grace is given in Christ is just the same as the love with which He loves us. God offers everyone the same grace. This is true for non-Christians and Christians alike. We are not yet perfect. Let's be honest. We are still being made through the work of the Holy Spirit into the image of Christ. 
we are still in the process of being made Christ-like. And therefore, we have no right to judge others. We may or may not agree with the choices others make or the lifestyles by which they live. We may not like uh, the way they speak or, or do things. But it is for God alone to judge. It makes no difference to God's grace how they live their lives, all for us. God's grace is the same. Yet, yet we, and because of the grace that God bestows upon us, we live gratefully and gracefully. Yet we admonish each other and encourage each other to live lives that are godly. As God in Christ shows us how to live. Sin is not a list of moral failings, do's and don'ts. But rather, sin is not honoring and respecting the relationships that we live in. When we show grace, give grace. When we are graceful towards others, we are we are as good of an image bearer of God as we possibly can be. When God created us, He made us in His image to re represent Him in this world. When we fell in sin, we destroyed something of that image. But in Jesus Christ, God came and restored that image. And it is through faith in Christ and His saving grace by which we live that we are restored in our image as God's image. So, my dear friend, receive God's grace with a heart of gratitude and give grace freely in gratitude. Have a graceful day. Keep well. Goodbye.